everyone, it's Roma Fisher. Glad you tuned into our program today. We're going to speak on a special message today uh, in midst of this um, uh, epidemic uh, across uh, globally affecting everyone, this COVID-19. And we thought we'd do a special program. You know, people are in fear and uh, I want to um, address that. And uh, I've been reading um, Psalm 91 like a lot of people I see through my uh, messages and different, different things on my Facebook feed. A lot of people really focusing on Psalm 91. Let me, let me just go ahead and read this uh, psalm for you and tell you uh, what we're doing. Uh, it says here in Psalm chapter 91, verse 1 to 4, that I'm reading the New Living Translation. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him, for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from, every, from, from deadly diseases. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. During this time, you know, we need to have um, peace in our hearts. You know, uh, Psalm chapter 4, verse 8 says that we can go to bed at night and be safe and be in peace and sleep and have a great rest. And God wants us to have that rest. And I want to assure you today that when you come to God and put yourself in His hands, His protection is there. Commit yourself today. Commit to coming back to God if you've been away from God, if you haven't been walking that close with God. Begin to get closer to Him. Listen to His Spirit and uh, also listen to the authorities and do the, those things that they tell you to do. You know, uh, keep your distance from people. Wash your hands. Uh, don't go be going out in public until they lift the the, the whole um, you know restriction across our nation and around the world. And don't go any place. Stay home, and uh, make sure you're not going to be spreading things or causing everything. You know. And also, you know, people are asking different questions. You know, you guys are. You know, lately we have to we had to shut down our services here in Thunder Bay as far as having congregational meeting. You know, I think it's like 50 people now. I think they're going to go down even more. And so um, I want to read you some scriptures concerning that because this will really, um, I believe, help you understand some things. You know, people say all kinds of things during this time. Uh, let's go to Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Remind the believers to submit to the, govern to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is, what is good. You know, we need to... Uh, be obedient and, and begin to surrender, uh, you know, to the laws of the land. And, and we begin, we, we've been given a directive from, from the authorities, from our prime minister, from our premier, from, from our local government here, our civic government, our mayor. And so we need to pray for these people. And they've told us not to uh, have these um, gatherings because uh, to help, help the whole uh, process of staying, keeping everybody clean and healthy and, and not, not spreading the disease around and, you know, helping the fear, you know, uh, diminish. And so I want to read you also from uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. And uh, people are, you know, sometimes they want to rebel against God and, and uh, not, uh, you know, uh, abide by the rules they've given us. And, and you know what, I believe that we need to follow God. We need to respect what God, Word of God says and, and do what they tell you to do and you're not going to be in trouble. You know, you don't want to have uh, unnecessary trouble and, uh, you know, we need to obey God at this time. So here it says here in uh, Romans 13, everyone must submit to governing authorities for all, all authority comes from God and those, who, those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So God... God uh, ordained this, ordained a leadership in our, in our nation, and He's uh, blessing that nation for, our, for us. Verse 2 says um, in Romans 13, So anyone who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, they will, uh, and they will be punished. Uh, verse 3, For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. Verse 4, the authorities are God's servants sent for your good. If you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants 
sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. And I want to encourage you today, uh, you know, um, not to be afraid uh, of the authorities, but abide by the rule, abide by the laws. You know, of course, we need to stay within those uh, confines of what they've given us. At this moment, it's a crisis. It's, this is not normal situations, and, and um, we need to take it as that and uh, let God intervene uh, through our prayers and our faith uh, within our communities. Pray for people. Pray for those that are working hard to keep the, our nation safe. Pray for, the, for, for your family and, and do the necessary things that will keep you healthy and safe at this time. And so we're going to go into the program. We're going to talk about I shall not fear. And I thank God for that we don't have to be afraid and because we got God uh, in his protection. His word says he'll protect you no matter what's going on in your life. And so we'll come back and, and pray with you in a few minutes. Here's what, uh, in this time of uh, this COVID-19 and, and all the stuff that's going on, there's, there's a lot of fear, a lot of stuff that's going on in the world that's making it difficult for people to live and to move around and to do different things normally. Fear is a choice. God has not given us a spirit of fear. And so we want, we want you to be at peace as well. God will keep everyone in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on Him. Doing the things that may have made them strong over the years, now they're, they're getting weaker. They're starving spiritually. They they're, can't walk by faith like they used to. They're, they're living more in the emotional realm. They're living more in the soulless realm. They're walking by how they feel and what they think and what everybody else is thinking. See, this time, in this time when, when, when there's all kinds of news coming at you, I've been watching different news, and I don't know how people live without God and God's Word. You can be overwhelmed in that. And so there, people are... Are, are, you know, they're saying all kinds of things, but all this information is coming to them and breaking them, their mentality down. And they're not spiritually minded, and so they get off track and they begin to act like the rest of the world, and, and the devil comes, the Bible says he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. So we should not be afraid. God commands us not to be afraid because he's our protector. He's going to move um, right up there to save us and protect us. The enemy has a, a legal right to enter in your life through fear. And uh, the psalmist said, you shouldn't be afraid. Over here in Psalm 91.5, he said, thou shalt not be afraid. Thou shalt not be afraid. So it's completely up to us not to be fearful. It's completely up to you and me to say, I will not be afraid. I'm not going to be, you know, just a, a few years ago, I made a decision that I was not going to be afraid of anything anymore. Because I began to see this in the Bible, and I said, you know what? I don't, I don't care what it is. Uh, lack of money, lack of money, uh, uh, lack of health, lack of resources, lack of people, whatever it is, I, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not alone. And uh, afraid of being sick or afraid of different diseases? Because, you know, in everybody's family, they got different kind of diseases. And different diseases affect families. And, 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 and as you get older and different things happen in your life, and you start... These things start coming up, and I said, no, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I decided, I said to the devil, I looked at him in the eye, I said, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of sickness. I'm not afraid of, this. I'm not afraid of having no money. And I, I, I began to trust God with all my heart, because that's what he said. Do not be afraid. So fear will allow the enemy from entering into your life. Like faith allows God to enter your life. And so we have to protect ourselves with that confession of faith. God begins to, uh, you know, over here, we'll see here, see the, Psalm 23, verse 4 says, he says here, that, yea, do I walk to the valley of shadow of death. Psalm 23 is a reality of what we're living in today, right now. Psalm 23 is our reality, the believer today. Jesus is our shepherd. We shall not want or shall not lack for one thing. That's what verse 1 says. Then in verse 4, let me go to verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death. Shadow of death is this world we're living in. There's death everywhere. The shadow of death is everywhere. The smell of death is everywhere. He said, I will fear no evil. That's what you have to say in the midst of trial, in the midst of trying times, looking at your 
symptoms in your body. You might not feel like you want to do it. You might have fear written all over your body. You might be uh, shaking. You might be having sweaty palms. You might be uh, having anxiety. You need to say, I will not fear. You know, uh, doing that doesn't mean you're not going to ever feel fear, but you're not going to let fear dominate you. Fear might be all around you, on, even on your body, but you said, no, I'm not going to be afraid. See, this is what being courageous means. Being courageous means not the absence of fear, but it means that you're going to do something no matter what, if fear is there or not. So I will no, fear no evil, no evil, not even COVID-19, not even sickness or disease, no matter what sickness it is. For you are with me, your rod and staff comfort me. Job and Job's life, Shows us that fear can cause evil things to come into a person's life. He was a very rich man, a very successful man, had a great family. And the enemy entered into his life through fear and almost destroyed him totally. Job 3.25 says this, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. You know, the word, the, the word fear, you know, um, is, is, what is fear, you know, naturally speaking? It's just, it, it, fear is a, an uncomfortable emotional response to what you're, what you're experiencing, what you're looking at. And it affects your mind, it affects your physical body. You know, you, you could, you, you know in science, they, they show different things with people. They show people pictures of different things. Thank you for watching Spirit Live. I believe that, you know, this hour we need to have a faith put in our heart. You know, there's so many negative things going on right now that it can disrupt your, your peace. I believe the message of faith regarding peace, regarding safety, will go into your, your heart and change your mind and change the way you feel about things and change the way you make decisions. And uh, I believe this is a divine connection. We're going to be right back after the program and pray for your needs. Hi, my name's Kelly and I just wanted to share with you a testimony that um, in 2013 I was diagnosed with lupus and I went through a really hard time. I had lost all my hair and it was just not great but through this ministry of Faith City Church and Spirit Alive I was taught the word of faith and I was able to overcome and gain the victory. We thank God for you, our partners and friends. We encourage our viewers to share with us how Spirit Alive is helping you. Please write us or call us. We are believing God with you. You know, you could, you, you know in science, they, they show different things with people. They show people pictures of different things. And, and they hook them up to different reactors and, and, uh, you know, in the science and shows that even looking at something with your eyes can affect your mentality and affects your physical body, your physiology. You can see your blood pressure and everything uh, start to work up because you're looking at it just like and you show somebody a real bear or something like that, and uh, they'll react just as, as if it was real. Science tells us whether real or imagined, fear can still affect you. It might not even be real. It might never have that sickness, but if you're afraid of that, it affects you the same way as if it, you had it. I've heard of people dying of different things uh, in medically that they didn't have. They just died, and the doctor said there's nothing wrong with that person, but they still died from, from something. So the, Job says, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has, has come to me. Fear is like a magnet. It draws that, what you, that whatever it is that you're afraid of to come to you. It's a spiritual law, and you have a choice whether to act courageous and follow God or act, in, act like that fear was there and that's real. For that thing which I dreaded, the new, new English translation, the thing that I dreaded has happened to me and what I feared has come to me. So, notice the new, new, new Living says this, what I always feared has happened to me. What I dreaded has come true. It's true, it's true, you know, it's, we could either reject our fears or, or, you know, or welcome into our lives by, our, by the way we act. The psalm, uh, psalmist, uh, the psalmist, or the Proverbs 10 and 24, the Amplified, the Classical Edition says, the thing, the thing a wicked man fears shall come upon him. See, this is a spiritual law. Whatever you decide to be afraid of, this thing is going to come upon you. 
but the desire of the uncompromisingly righteous man or shall, be, shall be granted. So it's like a magnet. People draw to themselves what they fear. It opens, the fear opens the door for destruction to come in their lives. It's a spiritual law. It makes, so we must make a stand against it. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says, For as much then as we are children of partakers, uh, for then as, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, that's talking about Jesus, himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that it had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them through the fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. People all over the world are afraid of dying. And this, during this time right now, they're afraid of dying, afraid of having this disease and possibly dying or other people dying. And all their lives, this, they have fear in their lives of dying, but they're subject to it. They're, they're under its oppression. It, it seems like they're oppressing them all the time. It's a bondage. Fear is a bondage. It keeps people from doing things and experiencing life fully like they, they, you know, they should be experiencing good things, but they're not because fear is upon their lives for different er- in different areas. There are different kinds of fears. The enemy will try to make you fear in many, many, many ways or many things There's, because there is actually a lot of things to be afraid of if you look at it from the natural. Here over here, uh, let's go to John chapter 14. We're going to round out the close pretty soon. We have here John chapter 14, verse 1 and verse 27, the King James Version. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. See, Jesus is telling us over here, you have a choice. Let not your hearts be troubled. If he didn't have that choice, he was saying, I'm very sorry that you're troubled. Nobody said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So don't allow yourself, the, key, the Amplified says, don't allow yourself of this verse to be agitated, to be, to be overwhelmed, to be taken by this fear. In verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world give it, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Verse, verse 27. Don't allow yourself to fear. Don't allow fear to come into your lives, into your heart, and dominate your mind. You can either be afraid, or you can live in peace. It's your, it's your choice. Peace or fear, it's up to you. Peace or you can enjoy all the blessings of God. And fear will cause you to not enjoy the blessings of God. Before you really begin to live, you have to deal with your fears. Fear doesn't go away just because you pretend they're not there. Fear doesn't go away because you avoid them. Fear doesn't go away because you're thinking about something else. Fear doesn't go away because you pretend they're not there. And, and so you have to work at it. You have to tackle it, and you have to make it go away through God's word. You have to make a decision, like I did, not to be afraid. Thank you for watching Spirit Live. I believe that, you know, this hour we need to have a faith put in our heart. You know, there's so many negative things going on right now that it can disrupt your, your peace. I believe the message of faith regarding peace, regarding safety, will go into your your heart and change your mind and change the way you feel about things and change the way you make decisions. And uh, I believe this is a divine connection. We're going to be right back after the program and pray for your needs. And you have to make it go away through God's word. You have to make a decision like I did, not to be afraid, not to live under fear. Psalm 23, 4. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the darkest valley, I will fear no evil or I fear no danger because you're with me, your rod and your staff protect me. Psalm 23, verse 4, um, the, verse 4, the common English. So we are to make a decision, and when we make decisions, we are not to make our decisions based on fear. We are going to all die someday, so why, why be afraid of it? Live your life the best way you can and, and live in, in the constraints of the, you know, the confines of the Word of God and, and whatever constraints you might have and naturally you might to protect yourself. So uh, live your life in peace, doing what God called you to do. If you're being fearful, you'll draw this to yourself. So get rid of your fear. I want to give you an example. As, uh, I want to show you something. I'll give you two examples, then we'll, we'll, we'll close for the night. Let me talk about somebody by the name of, um, or a man by the name of 
of, um, um, I don't know what his name is here anymore. <laughs> he was, uh, he was a, a ruler, call him a ruler of synagogue. I don't know what his name is here. But here's, a, here's, here's an example. I want you to go to uh, the fifth chapter, the book of Mark, uh, verse 22, 25, and 26. 22 to 25, and then verse 26. Remember Jairus, when his daughter was sick, and this little girl was near death, she was, um, uh, uh, when, when he was, this man came to Jesus, and Jesus was ministering to somebody, uh, or at least uh, he came to Jesus, fell at his feet, and uh, later his, this man's servants came and, and told him what was happening. And Jesus told him, fear not. Why did Jesus say, don't be afraid? Because, because um, this year, whether you fear or not, is a determining factor in your own personal life that whatever you're afraid of, this can either kill you, destroy you, or take away from you. I'm going to show you something here. It says, Mark chapter, chapter 5, 22, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet. You know, pretty good to fall at Jesus' feet. This guy was a, a leader, and he submitted himself. He humbled himself before God in a public place. You know, sometimes we said people come up, you know, who here, you know, you have sickness or disease, or you want to come to Jesus, nobody would move in the, in the service because they're afraid of what people are going to say. We'll never get what we need if we're afraid of people. we got to go to God without any kind of, uh, you know, uh, restraint. So he fell at his feet, verse, 20, verse 23, besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lied at the point of death. I pray thee come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. This is his confession. I will say of the Lord, yeah. you are my refuge. He's doing, he's doing the same thing. He said, yeah, come to my house, come to my little girl, lay hands on her, and she'll live and not die. I think it's Psalm 100 and... 18 verse 17, I think it says there, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. That's what you need to say in, in, in tough times. And here, he said, if you come to my house, you lay your hands on my daughter, and my daughter will live. He made a profound confession of faith. And so, uh, verse 24 carries on, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And, you know, here he was intercepted by another, another need. There was a woman who suffered, I think it was 12 years or 18 years or something, a long time, with a blood uh, disease. Can you imagine what this man was feeling? Jesus is going with him to his dying daughter, and somebody comes in and stops him from going for forward. He must have been afraid. He could have allowed fear to get over him. I said, Jesus, don't you know what's going on here? Come on. So uh, it says here that uh, in verse 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years came, you know, came by and, and intercepted it. I want you to notice here in verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, because these people came to, came to Jesus and said, listen, uh, ruler of the synagogue, whatever his name is, uh, listen, uh, your daughter is dead? Don't trouble, don't, don't worry bringing that uh, Jesus over. Don't even bother with it because she, she's already dead. When Jesus heard that, he said, listen, ruler of the synagogue, your daughter, he didn't say that, but he said, you know, just essentially what he's saying, your daughter will live. That's what he heard. He said, don't be afraid, only believe. That's what he said. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken by those people, see, you have to be aware of what's spoken around you by other people, but you have to take God's word over what people are saying. He says, uh, to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid. Only believe. You know, listen, you might have fear in your body. You might have fear. You might be experiencing fear. You might, you're pounding chest and you're, you're getting shaky and so on. You know how fear brings all kinds of physical feelings. You have to only believe. You can't believe what you feel. You have to believe the word of God. So, listen, you have to think about this. If, if the man Jairus, I guess that's his name, right? Jairus, if the man Jairus, uh, if he gave into fear, his daughter would have died. 
And if he would have listened to what those people said, don't bother the master any further, he would say, oh, yeah, Jesus, don't bother coming, my daughter's dead. And that's where a lot of people come sometimes where they don't trust God anymore because they saw the natural. And they gave up right there for, for what they saw, what they were feeling. Jesus said, only believe. And so he went with him, and you know, she was raised from the dead. I'm going to give you one more example here about either you have a choice to fear or not. Did Jairus had a choice to be afraid, or he, he would have to live with the peace of God? Thank you for watching Spirit Alive today. We want to pray with you right now. Whatever need you have, in the name of Jesus, if you're sick in your body, I want to pray that healing, the healing virtue of Jesus will, will come there wherever you are and heal your body. I believe that God's healing anointing is here upon this ministry to minister that to you today. And so let's go ahead and pray. I want to pray also and invite those who have never received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Let's pray this prayer right now. Repeat these words after me. He said, Dear God in heaven, I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to be the Savior of the world. I recognize that I'm a sinner. I invite him into my life. I change my attitude. I change my ways. I repent of my sin. And I yield my life to Jesus. Come into my life so that I can receive salvation and be born again. To wash me clean with your blood, Lord, from all sin. I thank you for this salvation. As you said in your word, you must be born again. Thank you, Lord. If you said a prayer, this prayer, you are now born again. And let's pray for those of you that are sick in your body. If you stretch forth your hand right now in the name of Jesus and say, God, I thank you for sending Jesus, not only, not only to be my savior, but also to be my healer. I thank you that 1 Peter 2.24 says that by his stripes, I am healed. I thank you that Matthew 8.17 says himself took my infirmities and bore my sickness. I thank you, Lord God, that Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Thank you, Lord God, for healing my body, for healing me from cancer and blood sicknesses and, and depression and different kinds of whatever ailment you got. You just go ahead and name it right now. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, verse 61, that every sickness Every disease is a curse of the law. But thank God, Galatians 3.13 says that Jesus Christ became a curse for you so that you might receive the promises by faith. So in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would receive your healing, whatever it is, whatever ailment it is, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll see you next time on Spirit Alive. We love you. We appreciate every one of you. God bless you until next time.